Hey guys, t here. Today I'm gonna walk you replay for you. It's a tier 3 premium Japanese cruiser. I'm fixing to get all of the tier 3 and above ships covered at some point. This one got moved up a little bit just because it's available from what I hear in the Xbox store right now. Not the in-game store where you normally buy ships, but wherever you can go to like the Xbox main menu and purchase things from there that I guess the ship's available there right now. Which leads me to believe it's probably going to be available for PlayStation 4 players as well, as well at some point. Before I get too into it, I do want to point out the update that I said was going to be released yesterday. Reverting the scoring back to the pre-update method. That got delayed because of the connectivity issues. So by the time this video is published, that update will have, if everything goes according to plan, be in place. So look for that next time you fire up the game. But the Iwaki, how you want to play this is basically, it's basically a destroyer cruiser hybrid. Or it's more accurately probably described of as a uh, destroyer with a citadel. <laughs> so like a destroyer, you're not going to want to be taking a lot of damage in this. But it has the added disadvantage of having a citadel, which really makes you not want to take a lot of damage in this because you will get eliminated very quickly. So in that regard, I would say it's a somewhat harder ship to play than others um, but if you're able to mitigate incoming fire then it can be a lot of fun to play now as a destroyer cruiser hybrid it's very effective eliminating enemy destroyers so that's typically the opening move I'll play I'll try and um, move forward do some scouting it has pretty good camo ratings for a cruiser so you're able to move forward a fair amount and if you can spot enemy destroyers um, you're able to use your cruiser guns which have nice HE damage against lightly armored targets such as destroyers and eliminate them from the game so we do spot a destroyer here on the other side of the island I'm attempting to play the sonar I end up popping the smoke as well that's just a mistake if you're wondering I didn't intend to play the smoke there there's no reason to but I'm getting some preemptive torps in the water. Now these torps are very nice. They have 10 kilometer range. They're typical strong Japanese torpedoes. So very nice torpedo package. But you can see here once we engage this Clemson we're able to do quite a lot of damage to them. And nice fire starting chance on this is 10%. Now you have four guns, one per turret. Four turrets can hit the target at any time. You do have five turrets overall, but four are effective turrets. And, you know, we're able to pump out some damage here on this Clemson, and he gone. So, that's a nice opening play with this. Now you'll see, once we start engaging a uh, more heavily armored target, such as this Wyoming, you'll get a little bit of damage here and there if you're hitting superstructure, or maybe the deck with the HE penetrating. But, in general, you're not going to get a lot of damage, and it is not high damage, even if it does penetrate, so you're going to want to use those shells primarily with the goal of starting fires. Now what's interesting about the ship is the modules. It has three module slots. Uh, the first one, I don't know what the options are because I always use aiming systems mod one, which reduces the dispersion among other useful things. And then the second option is a choice between prop mod or steering gears mod. I currently haven't configured with the steering gears mod if I ever feel like uh, optimizing the ship, I'd probably change it to pr prop mod just because, again, it plays more like a destroyer, and that's usually how it set those up. But either are pretty effective. I mean, the steering is, does help it to dodge shots, which is obviously important, but it's already a pretty agile ship, so the prop mod may be more valuable in the long run. But the third module. I believe it's the only one that has this mod, the only ship that has this mod currently available in the game. It's called Aiming Systems Mod Zero. And Aiming Systems Mod Zero is an extremely effective module. It cuts down on dispersion of both main and secondary guns by 40%. I think this thing has secondaries. If it does, they're basically irrelevant. But 40% decrease on your main gun dispersion is awesome. And you combine that with Aiming Systems Mod 1, which you should be using in my opinion. And you're talking about roughly a 50% decrease in dispersion, not even factored in any commander benefits that you may have. So, extremely accurate ship. 
So what that means is if you're aiming properly, you're going to be hitting what you're intending to strike a lot. So while the base damage that you're going to be getting from shell strikes in this is not huge, and by the way, I will use AP shells on like close range broadside cruisers. You can get some nice citadel strikes in that situation, but other than that, I usually just spam HE. But given the accuracy on the ship, you're going to be able to start a lot of fires. Now again, you're only going to have four shells per volley, but if you're hitting what you're trying to hit, you know, the, whatever the reload is, four or five seconds, combined with a lot of shells hitting the ship, that's going to start a lot of fires throughout the game. So you're not going to get a lot of damage from these guns just by landing a lot of shots on their own, but if you're able to stay alive for the full game, you're able to land a lot of shots and start a lot of fires, that just gradually builds over time. Now if you're trying to get high scores in this game, torpedoes definitely need to be in play. They're they're hard hitting torpedoes. If you're able to strike multiple battleships with the torpedo salvos, that's how you're gonna get your hundred K plus games in this. Definitely not gonna get it just by shooting guns. You know, barring extremely inept opponents and extremely opportune uh, situations. But that would be rather atypical, at least in my experience. So we're working on burning down this little guy, and then we do have a, I believe it's a Wicca's destroyer here that decides to engage me now. He appears to be lodged on the beach. I don't know if he got stuck there, if he was having a picnic or whatever it was. He decides to shoot me, and again, we're just going to see cruiser versus destroyer close range. It's not a fair fight. When I was playing, I was assuming he was going to be launching torpedoes. I could have popped a sonar there, but I thought he was close enough that I'd probably see the torpedoes basically when they were launched anyways, so that's why I didn't use them. But he must have been in, in between torpedo reloads or whatever and didn't launch any salvos. So the walkie's definitely not a frontline brawler. You don't want to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Iowa... <laughs> If you got an Iowa in your game, something's wrong with uh, the matchmaking, so report that to customer service. But you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be going toe to toe with heavy hitting ships because you're not gonna. You can take maybe one salvo from a battleship and survive, maybe. But you're not gonna take two. But it's definitely kind of a long range support ship, and again, very accurate, so you can play that way. And then you know, look for opportunities like right here. We do have this New York closing, and I'm. Uh, deploying the torpedoes. This is, you'll see um, when these torpedoes land here, they're, that's how you rack up the damage, so. Uh, this ship is spotted by a teammate, so we're gonna deploy the torpedoes, we're gonna start hitting them with the HE, and then we deploy the smoke. Again, this is a very destroyer-esque play that you guys have seen me make plenty of times, but we do have fires started here. He's already used his damage con, so the fires are gonna burn. And then he gets clipped with the torpedo, which hits some, you know, fire and flood combined damage, which would have been catastrophic for him anyway. Now, he did turn into that second salvo, which ended his life anyways, but even if that second salvo hadn't hit, I believe he probably would have died. Had, you know, if nobody had even shot him for the rest of his life, I think he would have died from that combined flood and torpedo damage, depending on when his damage con was used. So... A lot of fun to play, not the easiest ship to play in the world, but depending on whatever the price you're selling it at, it's probably worth picking up. I do enjoy playing it. I don't play a lot of Tier 3, but every once in a while I'll give this ship a go. It's definitely more fun, in my opinion, than the Ubari, the other currently available Tier 3 Japanese cruiser, which you guys might have seen me play on the stream <laughs> the other day with no success. So anyway, that's the look at the Waki. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. There's a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. I can promise you that. Questions, comments, leave them for me below. And we'll see you guys all later. All right, peace.